Hi, Vivian. This is Vivian Rose Weaver. Up until the age of three, she lived a normal life. Then everything changed. I was outside working one day and I heard her say, my head hurts. That's when her father, Simon, an ER doctor, sensed they needed to get Vivian to the hospital right away. And it dawned on me at that moment that she had said that several times. I examined her and I noticed that she had uh, two separate cranial nerve deficits. In that instant, sitting on the lawn at our house, I knew that there was something structurally wrong in her brain. The diagnosis was grim, DIPG, a rare and inoperable brain tumor. That was, uh, ugh. Uh, that was not, it. that was a difficult moment. In an instant, the Weavers faced a new reality. I just, I remember just feeling like I got hit by a truck or something and just holding my head in my hands and get, wondering, how can this possibly be happening? DIPG is a tumor on the brainstem. It grows like roots on a tree, interfering with basic body functions like heartbeat, breathing, and balance. Those roots make it impossible to remove with surgery. 200 to 400 children between the ages of 4 and 11 are diagnosed each year. 50% will die within nine months. 98% will die within five years. Radiation is the only known treatment, and it can't cure the tumor, but only temporarily slow its growth. Most of the times, kids will uh, present with a very short story, meaning they were fine a week ago, and they will come to the hospital much different than they were four or five days ago. Vivian started losing her balance, struggled walking, and had problems with her eye movement. Almost a year after she was diagnosed, Vivian is due for a follow-up MRI. She's already gone through six weeks of radiation therapy and a number of trial treatments. Today, Vivian's doctor will see if those treatments are still working. It had always been, like, as long as she doesn't go into progression, there's more hope. But the doctor didn't have good news. So this is the area that we were kind of, this is where I think things were subtly a little different last mm -hmm. time. So that, that has just expanded. And that's kind of the volume question. So this gets, a, there's a lot more contrast up here. So I'm just going to warn you that. We're pretty clear, like, pretty clear, like, this looks like tumor progression. I mean, I've been thinking, like, what do they do when she goes into progression? At what point do you go back through radiation? And if she is in progression, then, you know, is it worth taking that risk? I don't think anything that we're doing has been harmful, but mm -hmm. there's the possibility that you could have negative outcomes with things that's never contemplated. The Weavers decide to forge ahead with re-radiation therapy. This will not offer a cure, but may control Vivian's symptoms. A radiation mask is made to hold her head in place during treatment. A second course of radiation treatment can be beneficial just as a family, again, is kind of adjusting to the reality of their child's tumor progressing and probably the end of life coming. The very sobering reality is that they're willing to do something that they know is harmful and cancer producing, but none of these kids will live long enough to see those cancers develop. After the final radiation treatment, Vivian gets to ring a bell to signify that she has finished. Congratulations. 
it's the last hope of doing anything to prolong our life. As parents, uh, it's very difficult to sit back and just accept what we are told is our fate. After radiation, the only options left are experimental, and those have little evidence to show that they work at all. This is partly because funding for pediatric cancer research is less than for other types of cancer, and even less for DIPG research. Vivian is the very first pediatric patient in the world to wear the Voyager. The nativist Voyager is basically a headband that emits ultra-low frequency waves. These electric impulses are supposed to do the same thing as chemotherapy, but without side effects. Every step that we've taken to do things that are experimental, we take for Vivian, but also with the thought of all of these other kids that could potentially benefit um, if it works. Outside of the hospital, the weavers enjoy breakfast together, making the most of the time they have with each other. Vivian's parents signed her up for occupational therapy, where she is able to play and have fun. Strong. I am strong. This jungle gym of fun activities is designed to help preserve Vivian's motor skills. I appreciate how hard the family has worked to do everything for Vivian. I just want to be and stay unreasonably optimistic for the family that things will go well and use those just right challenges for Vivian to maximize her function as much as possible so she can be successful and have fun. Every year in Hood River, Oregon, a local ministry called Young Life hosts a father-daughter dance, a continued tradition for the Weavers. It's a highlight of the year for Vivian. Dressing up with help from her mom and sister is by far Vivian's favorite part. Let me see, can you do a spin for me? Hey, it's one for me. So are they gonna be good for dancing? Mm -hmm. How about that one? Every year she says, Papa, you have to dress fancy. And she tells me what suit I can wear. And each year it's been the same suit. I think the biggest thing is you realize only in retrospect that you take some things for granted. I think our desires for her are the same as every other parent. Those hopes and dreams for her don't evaporate in a moment because she's suddenly ill and has this tumor. So we cling to those things, however unlikely they are, but continue to wish the best and best for her and the longest life and the fullest life for her. We know that God has a bigger plan for us and for Vivian than just right here.